cool. We are joined now by Mason, who is part of the family. Uh, literally, you're part of the, you know, Matt and Brad. It's true. Yeah, so uh, got hired up a couple mm -hmm. months ago. Tell me about uh, what we got here for uh, uh, yeah, man. setup. Um, so Bradley mostly right now is playing the Silverton. Okay. Uh, 1449. Um, cool. A little solid body. Um, got like the... Lipsticks. Yeah, lipsticks on it. Um, yeah, he prefers the tone on it. it sounds great. It's like pretty bitey. Um, a lot of high end. Keeps it uh, on the bridge pickup. The All thing that. I noticed too is, uh, uh, you know, for a long time he's been using Mustangs. And I don't mm -hmm. see any Mustangs anymore. Yeah, we don't have any Mustangs on this tour. I really? Had any. <laughs> so the silver tone is. is the kind of. Would you say it does the heavy lifting or will do the heavy lifting yeah, on the tour? Definitely. Yeah, it's honestly like uh, a couple of rehearsals ago he was like, "This is this is the main one for the tour." Yeah. Wow. So we're bringing we're bringing the Baronic as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is kind of kind of the main guy. Uh, what about strings? Do we know for for the uh, silver tone? Yeah, we got the power slinkies. Okay. The Ernie Balls Elevens. Okay. Um, yeah, they're good. Now, I, I feel like, you know, you probably rehearsals, I don't even know, have they played a, a couple shows? Yeah, we did uh, some stuff in LA. Okay, so you've been up, able to, good. like, understand what it's going to mean to mm -hmm. take after Brad's gear, because yeah, I've seen fun. him in the crowd so many times. <laughs> a lot of looking. Yeah, yeah for a lot sure. of looking. I'm glad he's on wireless, because when I remember one, I think it was 2014 Lollapalooza, mm -hmm. He was still doing the cable, so the tech was feeding it through oh, the man. crowd. Yeah. yeah, happy to be on wireless. Yeah, yeah, sure. no, good, good for that. Yeah. But uh, uh, good luck on keeping his guitars together. Thanks, man. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's been going good so far. Yeah. yeah, he's only thrown two guitars at me so far. Well, so. I feel like he's gonna, you know, bust something because tomorrow's or not tomorrow, but this weekend's uh, Bonnaroo, yeah, so indeed, it indeed. might might be Smash City. Yeah, we got we got a backup for this one. So it's okay, like <laughs> well, let's see this bare neck real quick. Yeah, man, because these are cool guitars. We've seen mm -hmm. these a couple times on rig rundowns. Yeah, this thing is awesome. So uh, it's got like the gold foil sliding pickup. That's so um, rad. Usually it stays down all the way, but sometimes it gets like a little finger space. Yeah. Um, got some locking tuners on it. Okay. It's fun. These like circle tuning pegs. Um, yeah, and then this crazy input down here. And then, yeah, it's just like tone and volume. And well, what's the little, little white boost. guy do? Oh. Uh, yeah, I think both of these are just little boosts. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. It's an awesome guitar. This thing yeah. is really cool. You know, people say sometimes, you know, uh, guitar design has gotten stale, you know, just strap yeah. copies, Les Pauls. Mm -hmm. This is not one of those. Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Definitely like a very unique, cool looking guitar. Yeah. Kinda, it kind of gives me Batman vibes sometimes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, it's awesome. It's really fun. Now, do you know if this is just a backup or will it get used by Brad? Um, it was his main for a while, yeah. Oh, and wow. I think that it will probably show back up on tour at some point. Okay. Um, but yeah, he uses it in the studio a lot. Um, yeah, he really dials slider. it in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it just takes a lot of dialing sometimes to get it fully like exactly where you want it for okay. a sound. Um, so I think the silver tones are just a little bit more reliable, like in terms of um, the setup that he's built. Yeah. Um, so like he built the setup around the silver tones and then added this in, I think for this tour. Okay. Um, so yeah. It's a fun guitar, man. I, yeah, I'm sure, awesome. I, I just hope it stays in one piece. Yeah, I think this one definitely will, <laughs> for sure. And uh, last yeah. but not least, we have an acoustic here. Yeah, man, got the Gibson. Oh, that's fun. Mm hmm Yeah, this thing is awesome as well. Um, great. Acoustic guitar. Um, plays Can't go it. wrong with the J45. Yeah, true. So true. Yeah. Classic for a reason. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this thing is awesome. He plays it, uh, mostly plays the electric, plays this for probably about five or six songs okay. during the set. Any Little, off the top no of your rest. head that you can think of? Yeah, like Ain't No Rest for the Wicked. Okay. Um, Trouble. Uh, Neon Pill, the title track okay. of the new album. Um, yeah. Well, right on. Um, yeah. Maybe real quick, what strings does he use on this? Um, he uses uh, 11s as well. Okay. Er um, I, and I assume Ernie Balls? Yeah. Okay. Indeed. Cool. Well, uh, we'll stay put, but talk mm -hmm. to me about what he's plugging into in terms of amps, because we have nothing yeah. on stage. We have no cabs. Nick, on the other mm -hmm. hand, had the two amps. Yeah. Brad does not. Zero amps over here. Yeah. <laughs> not even a speaker to be found. <laughs> True. So tell me about it. Um, yeah. So he's got a rack um, that I'm in front of over there. Okay. Um, and it has uh, two Thermonic Culture, uh, has a preamp, um, the Phoenix, and then a, or sorry, Phoenix, the compressor, okay. and then uh, preamp, the rooster. Um, Love those names. And yeah, <laughs> indeed. And yeah, they're great. Uh, he runs straight into those uh, through some DIs, straight out this pedal board to try to get that like kind of DI studio sound. Yeah. Um, a lot of his like distortion and fuzz comes from kind of like console-esque fuzz yeah um so that kind of recreates that yeah indeed yeah man it's it's insane because like i was saying off camera to the other tech bailey we'll mm -hmm. talk to in a minute uh is that doing this now for 15 16 years mm -hmm. it's something i've never seen and i yeah. know it's possible mm -hmm. because you know people talk about doing that stuff the beatles did it and everyone else after that about yeah. going right into the console but man mm -hmm. to see that in a live environment is a yeah. trip 
And, and, and I'm, I'm sure we're showing you B-roll right now mm -hmm. over my hands. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it, it's something I've never seen. But it's it's cool that they took that effort to bring okay. the record to the stage. Yeah. Because it's definitely uh, a sound that they've created, like you said, with the silver tone. Yeah. Yeah, so. Brad has a very unique sound, and I, I think it's really cool. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, walk me through uh, the pedal board here. Yeah, man. So, so we got here. I um, got some JHS. Um, got the color box, two of them. Um, and then the crayon. Um, now, how is the the color box is getting used in terms of routing? Is it because like this? These are kind of like I don't want to say Neve copies, but they're kind of mm -hmm. like the console thing too. Yeah, um, they are they more of like a volume drive or like what? What? How are they getting used? Uh, they're pretty much like I think it's just like a lot of layers of fuzz. And okay, like they kind of all add up to create this like loud bitey distortion. Got it. Um, so yeah, a lot of times he'll kick like most of these on for like a okay a like really bitey sound. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and he's got the white pedal. Um, sounds like the fuzz off like the Beatles' White Album. Okay. Um, and that's from the uh, can't remember uh, Jex to Les. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember either. But um, yeah, so that's kind of kind of the fuzz. He also has the tone job, which he kind of uses as an EQ. Okay. Um, yeah, and then got some delays. Got this thing. Oh yeah, it's a lo-fi delay, which is you know mm -hmm. kind of goes into their sound. Yeah, exactly. yeah, the kilobyte. Um, and then this thing, which he uses kind of like, he, he says like for like ad libs essentially, but it's um, like what we call like the laser beam kind of sound where okay. he'll like for, um, he'll like step on that and play like kind of like a high situation and uh -huh. like ring throughout like a space, which is really fun. And then I, I can't see because it it's taped up, but it, it's probably mm -hmm. a DD5 or DD6 or something. I think so. Yeah. yeah I actually okay. just put tape over it today. Like, so, <laughs> and should know that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, phase 100. Mm -hmm. Max. Yeah, this thing's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Both all the way up. Yeah. Um, yeah, some awesome sounds out of that. And then, yeah, he runs out of this ABY. Um, so he has a clean channel and a dirty channel okay. going into that rack okay. um, that both just run simultaneously on top of each other. Um, the then, reverb? Yeah, I got the MXR reverbs. Uh, these things are awesome. Oh, yeah, got, double reverbs. Yeah, I got one for the electric dirty and then one for the um, acoustic channel as well. Oh, okay. This is just like a little acoustic section. Um, but yeah, I love those. Keeps them pretty blended between like plate and spring. Um, yeah, those are great as well. And then the last kind of thing that, besides the tuners here and the mm -hmm. noise suppressor, is yeah. uh, the dynamic wall. How's that getting used in the set? Yeah, um, occasionally, not a lot. So it's um, not maybe doesn't have like a, a target point. It's just kind of whenever he's feeling it. Yeah. Okay. Indeed. Yeah, man. And is the NS2 something you you feel like you need to have, or is it more just like just in case? Um, there's not a ton of like buzz coming out of this rig, honestly. Okay. Um, I think it just eats all existing which isn't that much so yeah. it's like it's probably just for like safety but Got it is for sure